In 2007, I attended the annual meetings of the American Society for Reproductive Medicine. Um, at those annual meetings, there was a small gathering of mental health professionals who were holding a two-day seminar entitled Men and Assisted Reproductive Technologies, The Missing Voice. Speakers at the seminar lamented the dearth of research on male infertility and encouraged the audience to, to try to do more research on male infertility. During one of the question and answer sessions, um, a clinical therapist in the audience rose to the microphone and said with some exasperation, we are trying to study male infertility. Infertile men don't want to sign up for our studies. So needless to say, um, infertile men do not line up around the block for a study of male infertility. What is unique about th my study is that I did not recruit men from IVF clinics run by reproductive endocrinologists, places where you find lots of women and lots of sperm, but no guarantees that you'll find any men. You'll, instead, I went to male reproductive health clinics run by urologists specializing in male infertility medicine. Also, men were not recruited on the base of their, basis of their fertility issues, just the fact that they were consulting with a male infertility specialist qualified them for the study. Um, according to the American Society for Reproductive Medicine and all of the doctors I interviewed, infertility is defined as the inability to conceive after one year of unprotected intercourse. Um, all of the men interviewed for this book fit the definition, or for this project, fit the, the clinic, that clinical definition of infertile. However, fully two-thirds of them claimed that they had never thought of themselves as infertile. Even those who did self-identify as infertile conceptualized their diagnosis or themselves as somehow different than other textbook cases of male infertility. So let's go back to our question. Where are all the infertile men? Some men never proper, are never properly assessed and diagnosed. Some infertile men do not undergo treatment, their wives do. Some infertile men do not self-identify as infertile. And some infertile men do not know what infertility is. When asked to define infertility, men provided a range of answers. A few men recited the clinical definition of infertility. Several men defined infertility as the inability to achieve, to achieve pregnancy naturally or without medical assistance, while others claimed infertility means that even with medical assistance, pregnancy is still not possible, and others admitted that they did not know what the definition was for infertility. How men conceptualize and make sense of their inability to achieve pregnancy provides an instructive picture of how men engage in gender work and um, how men participate in the social constructions of gender and disease. It also explains in part why male infertility is so difficult to study. If men don't self-identify as infertile, they're not likely to volunteer for a study of infertile men. Nearly all of the men in this study reported feeling surprised when they first heard the semen analysis re results and expressed a range of emotions from mild disappointment to deep heartache associated with their childness, childlessness. Many men in this study confessed that their poor fertility caused them to feel like less of a man or an inadequate husband or worried that their wives would have regrets about marrying them. Many men in this study, including both those who self-identified as infertile and those who did not, understood infertility to be potentially threatening to one's masculinity, but explained that their diagnosis or situation was somehow unique and therefore less threatening. 